Thank you, Madam President. Madam President, I come to the floor today to address the um, amendment of which we'll be voting in the next uh, 15 or 20 minutes. Uh, it's Barrasso Amendment Number uh, 2137. Uh, it has to do with building codes and the bill that's on the floor tonight for our discussion and debate, the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Uh, there is money in this bill that's being debated today for building codes. And this amendment is quite simple. This is a consumer protection amendment. And it just says no money, no money in this bill can be used to bar natural gas hookups to your home. Can't block commercial use, residential use, and new constructions. So no money in the bill can be used to restrict or prohibit the direct use of natural gas in residential and commercial buildings for space heating, for water heating, for cooking, for other purposes. And can also use money to compel the adoption of model building energy codes. Those are local decisions that are made. And the, the, the thing that's why I come to the floor to speak specifically about that uh, is that people all around the country are very concerned about what is in this bill and how it's going to affect them at home and how they live and their pocketbooks. No matter where you're from, people say, well, how is this going to impact me? People who are living under the times of these a massive inflation that they're hitting. They're paying more for groceries. They're paying more for gasoline. They're paying more. And now they're looking at if they come out and come out with building codes that block natural gas hookups, what's that going to do to the cost of energy, to heat their home, to cook, all of those sorts of things. And for people who are not necessarily tuned in to this, who may be members of this body, but who don't think about how so many of the decisions here impact hardworking American families, I, I come to a story that was in uh, this morning's Wall Street Journal. The headline is, Natural Gas Phase-Outs Are Facing Resistance. And there's a reason they're facing resistance. They're facing resistance because people do not want to have to pay more money for energy to heat their homes, to cook, all of those things. And the article points out that Massachusetts is emerging as a key battleground in this U.S. fight over whether to phase out natural gas for home cooking and heating with fears of unknown costs, that's what people are concerned about, unknown costs, unfamiliar technologies fueling much of the opposition as the country is being encouraged to go all electric. So what we're seeing is that more towns around Boston are debating measures to block or limit the use of gas in new construction. And they talk about climate change as a reason for that. Well, builders and realtors will tell you that the construction costs go up and the cost of heating and cooking go up if you're not allowed to use natural gas in the construction. As a matter of fact, a, a study by a subsidiary of the National Association of Home Builders published this year estimated that building all electric homes, building all electric homes in the colder climates of Denver, Colorado, the Rocky Mountain West, uh, Minneapolis is part of their study, Madam President, they say it may cost at least $11,000 more to build those than it would if you could allow them to be built for the use of gas. So they say, wait a second, before you drive up the cost of buying a new home, before you buy up, drive up the cost of cooking and heating your home, let's let people make some decisions for themselves. We don't need not Washington telling us what we need to do and what we can do. Uh, Major cities right now, including San Francisco, Seattle, Denver, New York, they've enacted or proposed measures to ban or discourage the use of natural gas in new homes and in buildings. Uh, this is two years after Berkeley, one of the most liberal bastions of the country, passed the first such prohibition in the United States. And as you can imagine, when these things are coming out of California, a state with the highest electricity costs in the country, a state with ongoing blackouts because of their lack of energy effectiveness and efficiency and all of the mandates related to energy and sky-high prices, the efforts have sparked a backlash, no surprise, prompting some states to make gas bans illegal. So I'm coming to the floor with this amendment to point out that as we're working on bipartisan legislation and there is money in the bill for building codes that no money can be used to prohibit natural gas hookups to homes, 
commercial construction, residential, new construction. Because consumers have to have a say in this. Shouldn't be government saying, we know better than you do. We'll spend your money. We'll make decisions about how you get to spend your hard-earned money. And as coming from the state of Wyoming, where there's a significant production of natural gas, affordable, reliable, available, people want to use it. They want to use it because they know the value to them and their families and their way of life. They don't want Washington coming in and saying, nope, you can't do it because we know better than you do. And I hear a lot about that at home in Wyoming, people saying to Washington, you don't know better than we do. We don't need you telling us. The bill doesn't say they have to, that it's going to tell them. We just want to make sure that by adopting this amendment, building codes do not bar the use of natural gas hookups to your home. Thank you, Madam President. I yield the floor. Let's have a quorum. The clerk will call the roll. Ms. Baldwin.